Over 80% of Nigerians live below the poverty line and street hawking has become one of their short routes to survival. But in Lagos, street traders aren't having it easy. They are complaining that the government is taking away their source of livelihood by chasing them off the streets. The government, on the other hand, is convinced it is doing them a favor. Jacinto Biku takes a dive into the plight of Lagos street hawkers. Street trading has woven into the culture of daily life in Lagos. Constant traffic jams and congestion provide a ready market for sellers to hawk their goods to commuters. Across Nigeria, the increasing scourge of poverty and worsening economic condition has led to a further increase in street hawking in major cities such as Lagos. But selling along the street has always been a continuous issue in the state for years. Successive governments have always either banned it or attempted to minimize it unsuccessfully. And the traders complain that they don't have rest of mind while trying to make a living. That's what used to come and push us from here. Every time they were always chasing us that we should not sell for you. Even members are always complaining about this thing that since they don't want us to sell again, how do they want us to feed? When there's a lot of frustration in the streets, what do they expect the people to do? There are some part of the overseas that they pay, even people that are not working. Can they do that for us? If they don't create one place for us now, can they do the sell market? No, no any place. Yeah, we'll see them, see the car now. I mean, they can't they don't return now. If you want me to kai, me want to jam you, then you not go sign there. As today, you not get us some. Even if I want to, I not get some. Now that we look up now, they look here, they look because at times they can fuck up for no way. They say our market, the way they allow us, they say market. They they stop us, they they push us up and down. These kind people, they they collect money for our hand every day, but they not they allow us race for waiting. But they allow us. Most say our market, most see where to go chop. For them to tell us that we should be keeping the environment clean and not to than stop on us to sell food because that is where we are eating, looking for solutions to feed ourselves. We don't have any other thing to do than to sell this food. In trying to balance the allegations, we decided to hear from Shola Jejeloye, the chairman of the Lagos State Tax Force on Environmental and Special Offenses Unit. The agency given the responsibility of reading Lagos of environmental nuisance. The position of the law is that street occurs market women displaying their goods on the road or right of way, you arrest them, you pack their goods, everything to the court. Those people on the road, on the street, selling handkerchiefs, selling carrots, selling walnuts, selling uh, chips, in the name of hustling, they have this kind of gullible mind that can make them be lured into crime. Deji Akim Belu is a social psychologist and the founder of Rethinking Cities. He believes urban planning of Lagos State should include spaces for small scale traders. A clear issue here is the issue of design and urban planning. Um, there's a strong correlation between transportation and um, commerce and trading. So, by default, in a city like Lagos, where you have um, a bus, station that you have large number of people um, ending their journey by default you have a situation whereby you have trading go go on around um, those access and you have lots of places like that you understand but when you now build bus terminals and you don't make provision for you don't make provision for affordable stores or what you, what i can call traditional markets or provisions for petty trading, you are definitely bound to have a situation of uh, street trading. I mean, this is Maryland access. This is the bus station that is about to be built. If you build this bus station now, tomorrow definitely what you're going to have as a situation, if you don't have stores if within that bus station, you're going to have people trade along the corridors of the road. So there is a strong issue of design. But JJ Luya disagrees. He thinks Lagos is too large for the government to meet everybody's needs. Lagos is too big. And if you see, even commercial bus drivers want space by government. In our various houses, we want space. We want, some, we want government to still do something. And that is why I have said everybody should look deep and see 
we must equally help ourselves. Treat occurs, my advice to them is, in as much as we are all able-bodied, they should be encouraged to channel their lifestyle into another profitable means. Profitable means in the sense that a venture that will start that, that will stand the test of time, that can make them to raise their family, that can make them to be more useful to the society. Because selling by the roadside does not mean any future for this state, does not mean any future for this country. Rather, those people could be easily manipulated into going into crimes. Akin Belu suggests a possible bait for the government to consider in urban planning and development. The reality of the people is such that you have to build small market stores, organize these traders into affordable market structures or development. It doesn't have to be brick and mortar. We keep improvising our people and making them poorer by the day by going on the streets and saying you're trying to take off street traders off the road. So we have to really rethink our city development, uh, our vexation and interest in ultra-modern, um, we need to review it. We have to meet up with the realities of the people and begin to build according to the needs of, of the society. JJ Lawyer's team is not only taxed with ensuring Lagos is free of unwanted street trading, it is also responsible for pulling down unwanted structures, like this clearing of shanters along the coastal road of Lekki. This isn't the first time this is happening, and it doesn't look like it would be the last. The anti street hawking policy of the Lagos state government may be unfruitful if it's enforced without addressing the root cause of hawking. Jacinta Ubiuku for Plus TV Africa. Hello, hope you enjoyed the news. Please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to hit the notification button so you get notified about fresh news updates.